YouTube, welcome back. Alright, today's going to be another episode of the Bonsai series I've been doing here for you guys. And it's going to be about cuttings and how to use cuttings to get bonsai material. Whether you want to make several cuttings and wind them together and make a larger specimen, or you just want to grow something from cuttings to obtain a bonsai in the future. Because you're not going to be able to do it right away. Uh, I have a diagram. Oh, I know, diagrams. It's like going to school, isn't it? Um, but I also have two co-stars with me today, which I will bring out. I have a African natal plum and a ficus that I did make from cuttings. That way, well, that's why he's here, because he was made from cuttings. Um, he's a cut above the rest. I know. Flat. All right, anyway, getting started. What we're going to do is I'm going to grab the camera, because it's the only way I'm going to be able to do this, and go through everything, uh, show you what goes on. Uh, I'm going to use the diagram first just to give you an idea, and then I'm actually going to show you how to make your own cuttings so that you can use a diagram of what I show you to kind of put two and two together, all right? Okay, so let's, let's do that. All right, so if you can see the diagram, let me move the cutting guy over in the baggie. Okay. Matter of fact, let me unhinge this and bring it closer. So what you got here is you have, the first one is a, called a layering. This is just regular layering. You take a regular tree and you take a branch that's kind of what you want for a bonsai specimen. You scar it all the way down to the cambium layer. You will use clips, paper clips, wire, rope, whatever you can, or even a rock, and just lay it against some dirt in a potting soil. Leave it like that until that roots, and then you can cut it free from the actual main or mother plant. The second way is a way that I've used and a lot of people do use is called air layering. Now, air layering is a little more difficult for somebody starting out if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, you have to kind of do it to kind of get the, the hang of it. And the idea behind it is what you're going to do is you're going to find a branch or the main stem of the tree looking at if that would make a really cool tree, which that would, if you look at it, that would be a really cool bonsai tree with all the branches. You're going to go below it, strip the bark about one to two inches, all the way down to the wood, past the cambium. You don't want any cambium layer from here to here, because what will happen is it will regrow bark, and then it, you'll fail. So what you're going to do, cut it, scar it, open it up. You're going to get a plastic bag, whether it's Ziploc, cellophane, whatever you need or whatever you got and sphagnum moss wet it really good wrap it around that wound cover it and then wrap the plastic bag or the cellophane over it and leave it you may want to punch a hole in the bottom and one on the top to let water run down if it's outside the rainwater will run in run out so it won't drown it um, it'll probably take a couple weeks but when you start seeing roots that are touching the the out parts of the bag then you can safely cut this free from there and plant that into a pot. You do want to be careful, though, when you're finally taking it off. Those roots are going to be delicate. Gently work the sphagnum away and then plant it. You don't want any sphagnum left near the roots. I mean, if it's a ficus tree you're working with, you may get away with it. They don't really give too much, so it won't really matter. But if you're using something different like a deciduous tree or another type of tree, I'd get the sphagnum all off. This is your green cutting or your standard cutting. This one here is pretty simple. You'll cut four to five leaves down. Uh, you want to make sure each you have at least four or five nodes, which are the little notches where the leaf meets the stem. That's usually where a branch will come out or a new leaf or a flower. You want to count down four or five. Um, I used the top leaf, sorry. I didn't draw all five. So you really want to go down the stem five, not counting anything like that and you will remove almost all the leaves, leaving maybe two or one. The reason why you do this, obviously, if you know how to cut new cuttings, is because you don't want loss of water through transpiration because of the fact that it has no roots to bring water in, so it gets everything from those leaves that are left on it. Then you will dip the bottom ends into rooting hormone, stick it into a bag or a pot or a greenhouse type thing that you make up to root cuttings and hopefully you'll get yourself a cutting. 
There's one I did leave out, which you can use some species, you can make leaf cuttings, leaving a little piece of the branch here and just one leaf and do a bunch of cuttings. But to obtain something like bonsai, you would take you years. The last but not least, I wanted to throw it in because some people actually have succulents they like to use as bonsai. They're real simple. Break a branch off, let it callus over, stick it in the dirt. That's it. I just wanted to throw it in there just in case people were going to ask questions about uh, succulents like desert rose, jades are a big one, and some other types of uh, succulents. If really, you just break it over and make sure the ends callus over, and once it's calloused over, when then maybe a week, then you can stick it in some soil. All right, now we are going to make cuttings. Let me put you back where you belong here. That's why I got hands free. Sorry about all the odd camera angles. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this guy. Let's bring him close. This is an African, they call it African natal or natal plum. It's kind of spindly because it's been in the house all year. I should have put it outside with the rest of the plants, but I never did. It's got real dirty leaves because of the dust in the house. It's dropping leaves now because of the winter. Uh, it does, however, grow pretty well inside. The only downfall with an African plum is that they have some really nasty thorns. I don't know if you can see them back here. I'll try to bring the plant closer. They have these nasty thorns. And you have to be really careful, especially if you have children or pets. I found out cats like to chew them, but once they find the thorns, they leave it alone. And you have to worry about that the cat broke off splinters in the mouth and whatnot. We are going to be taking cuttings from him. But I just wanted to show you this plant. I'll do a whole segment on the African natal plum. These are real easy to care for. They're sun lovers, like bright light lovers. They will often produce gardenia scented blooms and then produce an edible fruit, which is like a big giant cranberry. They use them as hedges in California, as far as I hear, and in Florida. Apparently they're supposed to be real easy to root. I've tried to root this before, and no success. But it grows really well. Um, my wife picked it out. She liked it because of the fruit and the blooms. And uh, ever since then, this thing has been growing and growing and growing. The bottom has thickened up quite a bit since we got it. It was about as thin as this bar uh, <clears throat> Pardon me, this branch here. And I just keep feeding it, feeding it, and taking care of it. And it just keeps growing. Okay. So now we're going to move on just to show you this guy here. Let's switch places. All right. Now what you're looking at is the ficus that I made from cuttings. He was one, two, three, I believe four cuttings in there. One completely got fused into the other three. There really is no more evidence of the one in the middle because it was absorbed by the others. Since ficus grow so fast and so aggressively, they will often just merge with each other and sometimes resemble melted candles because um, their aerial roots will then bind with their bark and whatnot. They're easy to make cuttings. They root very fast because it is a very fast growing tree. Um, they respond really well to good pruning and I recommend these highly for beginners. As I always had said before, ficus are very good beginner plants. This one being a, what they call a retusa or a fi tiger bark ficus. All right, let's bring back the other one. All right, let's bring back the needle plum. Now, we're gonna make some cuttings off of this. And I think I've chosen the branch to do it. Where was it? Here it is, right here. Reason being is it's got at least uh, four to five nodes. Oh, wait, that's not it. My God, what am I doing? It's this one. It has four to five nodes, being the nodes between the branches, or between the leaves. And I'm going to count down. You got one, two, three, four. There's five. I want to count that one as five, but it has four. So what you want to do, just take a nice sharp pair of scissors, cut it. Now you should really have what looks like this. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to take all the leaves off of this cutting. Like you're going to cut every single leaf off of this cutting. 
Now, with natal plums like ficus, they do secrete a sap. It's an irritant. I have never been bothered by it, but and now that's what you're left with. Okay. Between every one of these little nodes that's leaking sap, that's a potential for some roots. But we're going to find out. Bye. What you can do is several things. You can get a container like I've done here, and I'll show you this. This is just an example. I use Ziploc bags. For the reason being is Ziploc bags, they don't drain, number one. You could put a really good fine draining mix in it and just make it moist. You don't have to make it too wet. And when it needs extra humidity, you just zip the bag shut over top of the plant. When the plant starts outgrowing the, the, the actual bag itself, it's already rooted, so you don't have to worry about it no more. And then you can just lightly water it as it needs it. The great thing about a plastic bag is once you cut it, the dirt will fall away from the roots, unlike having to you know wrench it from a pot. So growing them in Ziploc bags I find to be more beneficial than in anything else. And because the humidity built up around it always keeps the dirt evenly moist, it always seems to root well. What's in here are just some geraniums that are rooting. Um, and I've, I've had a lot of luck with that. And I'm going to try that with the uh, natal plum. So that's the gist uh, for doing some cuttings and other things that you'd like to do um, for bonsai. I uh, will move in and move on a little bit with the series with some other species. I have a brush cherry I need to get to and then the natal plum. And then hopefully, you know, pretty soon we should be wrapped up. And you guys should be able to try some and then show me what you're doing and have, ask me questions of what you're doing. I'd like to see what you do based upon some of the information I gave you. And it would be really fun. And I look forward to it. And you can check me out on Facebook um, and just send me your questions or whatever you need. All right? And if you like what you're seeing, man, please subscribe and hit me a like. All right. Take it easy, guys.